July 2012 in the Sierras near Clipper Mills, California. A couple is camping with their dogs. In the middle of the night, they're awoken by strange sounds in the forest. Here's a clip of what they captured. Crazy. Not a bear. Yeah. That's no dog. That's a bear. I think he's a bear. I don't think so. They don't call that much. What the f is that? It looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. Hi, this is Carol King from Music City, and you're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. We're going to be chatting with uh, Joseph. And Joseph comes to us from Florida. Ten years ago, he was out hiking and camping out in the middle of the swamps. He was on a uh, two-day trip, I believe. And uh, the last night, these creatures came in and surrounded his camp and uh, followed him all the way out. And it's a pretty scary encounter. Uh, Joseph was pretty shook up by it. And even though it happened 10 years ago, he still shook up by it. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchronicles.com. There's a daily blog and you can become a member and get additional shows. 
Uh, let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Joseph to the show. Joseph, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Wes. Yeah, thanks for being here, man. And I know your encounter took place 10 years ago uh, in the Florida swamps. Pretty terrifying account, really. If you would, kind of take us back to that moment. Uh, tell us what you were doing and how how did all of this start? Yeah, so I was uh, 19 years old. And I made a decision to hike the Florida Trail from US 41 to Alligator Alley, going um, north from US 41 to Alligator Alley. And uh, I think it was June or July. I think it was June, maybe. So it was in the summer. And, you know, I just went to Bass Pro Shops and got all my stuff that I, I needed. And off, off I went. Um, so, you know, it was a two day hike. Um, for me, none of my friends wanted to go with me. Um, they all said I was kind of crazy and I, you know, they weren't doing it. So I said, okay, well I'm going. So, um, you know, went, um, on this two day hike first day, just a regular, regular hike, really uneventful. And so I put up my hammock, um, for the first night and that's when things kind of started to get, you know, I'm in my hammock, it's twilight. Uh, it's evening and I hear, I hear like a whoop, like I'm, my neighbor, I don't want to be loud. My neighbor's going to think I'm crazy, but basically like that, just really loud. And then I started hearing tree knocks, like something's taking a, a stick and hitting the trees. And then I heard it in, in different locations. And um, before long, I start hearing you know, footprint, foot, something's, something's walking, like, like something's walking. Um, and you know, when things are quiet, you can hear something's walking, especially when it's coming through the brush. I, I hear it coming from three different directions. And then, I mean, it walks pretty, walks up pretty close. And then they ended up, you know, on all directions, you know, they're there, they came from three different directions, but it turns out there was four of these things that basically surrounded me. So I'm laying in my, I'm laying in my hammock and just listening to these things. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm really scared. Um, and several times I, I, in the night I got up, you know, lifted my head up and looked around, turned my headlamp on, looked around, never saw anything. Um, and I heard them, you know, all night. And I, I guess I was so tired from the night, from the, walking that I think I would pass in and out. Um, which that, that there's parts of the story that, you know, really just don't make sense. Even, you know, to me that I just, it just doesn't make sense. So, but that's kind of one of the things that does, doesn't really make sense is I would be in and out. And at one point in the night, I heard this something hit my hammock, but I didn't feel anything, but I, I, I heard it. And it turns out in the morning, um, it, and it was loud. It, it hit it, and then it was like a loud noise, whatever. I had hung my food bag up behind my head in the hammock, like on the tree um, behind me or behind my head, whatever. Uh, this is 10 years ago, so some of the finer details you know, are starting to get lost. But anyway, um, in the morning, my food bag is on the floor. So you know, I, I surmised that this thing hit my food bag, and it had fallen. And so anyway, morning comes, I'm scared. I'm scared. Like you wouldn't believe scared. I, as soon as I think it's coming into daylight, I pack up everything, never see a thing. And I start on the trail, keep going North. Um, and on my way out, I see two sets of footprints that were coming in. And this is like the swamp. This is the Florida Everglades. So, I mean, it's a lot of mud and, you know, there's, there's, there's footprints, there's good footprints. So, um, there's a big set of footprints, small and, and with a small set of footprints. And, you know, when I say small, I mean, bigger than mine, but compared to the big footprint, it was small. Um, so anyway, and then the, what I noticed that was really struck out to me was a stride. You know, if you walk, you know, and, and you, and you're tracking your footprints, there's maybe like a foot, maybe a foot between your toe and your heel, this thing, I mean, I had to, you know, I I'm six, two, 
I'm not small and I have to like reach to get the stride, like really reach my legs, like as far as I can to get the stride of the bigger one. So I said to myself, you know, Hey, I really want to get out of here. But I said, you know what? This is important. No one's going to believe this. So I whip out my phone. I take pictures of the footprints, you know, throw my phone in my pocket and off I go. So really uneventful until the afternoon. Um, keep going. And, uh, you know, what? if you ever hike in the summer in South Florida in the swamp, it's not an easy hike. It's, it's water and mud and it's just not easy and it's hot. So you got to take a lot of breaks. So I'm taking one of my breaks that I have to take. I'm leaning up against the tree and I hear the same whoop that I, the whoop or yell, whatever that I heard the previous evening. And it was to the North of me. So I thought, oh, okay, here we, here we go. So anyway, so when I, when I felt like I was good to go, I got up and kept going North. And then when I got to the, you know, there, it'll be like water and then it'll come up on dry ground or like a higher ground. And so this is on like a higher ground and I stop again. And when I hike, you know, I'm hiking by myself. I'm just the way I do it. I, I'm very quiet. I, I, anyway, I, I stop. And so after, and I'm just, just sit, sitting there, the clouds are kind of rolling in. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to refill my water if it starts to rain and thinking about all this stuff. And then I start hearing footprints. I start hearing, it sounds like someone walking through the woods or something. Um, something's coming through the woods. So it, it's, it's coming through the woods and it's coming kind of like diagonally. It's hard for me to say over the phone. I can like draw it out, but this thing, whatever it was, was going to come out into the open and I'm sitting on my butt, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, I don't want whatever this thing is. I don't want to startle anything or anything just to kind of happen upon me and be startled. So I start making noise, you know, kind of like shifting my body and in my pack and everything. And, and so this thing stops. So I, I, I get up and I start walking towards this thing because I said, I want to know what this thing is. I've heard them, but I haven't seen anything. And I said, whatever this thing is, I want to know. So I start walking towards it. And as I'm doing that, at some point I'd on the way in, I had stepped in crap, didn't smell anything. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but this is just, this is just what happened. So I step in crap. And so, I'm, you know, it looks like a giant pile of human crap that I'd stepped in. And so I, I'm looking at my footprint and giant pile of crap. And I just, okay, just, I don't know what to make of it. Anyway, um, I thought it was very odd. And so I keep going kind of like down the trail a, a little, a short little ways where this thing is about to come out. And I, I'm looking into the brush. And if if you've been in like real thick brush, you know, looking in, it can almost be like dark. It's It's dark. It's not yeah. easy to see. So I'm standing there, I'm looking into the brush and, I see an outline of just an outline of it looks like a person except giant, just, I would say, you know, the size of a, of a door, put a head on it. And that's what, that's what I saw as far as an outline goes. And it was just standing there just facing me. And in my, in my mind, I thought this is real life. That's what like was flashed through my mind. And I'm, I'm, I'm standing there. I must've been 20 feet. I mean, you know, 20 feet away and I'm standing there. I, I, my dad, before I left, he gave me a snub nose 38 revolver. So, you know, I've got my snub nose 38 <laughs> revolver in my hand and I'm looking at this giant thing. And so I thought, okay, this is real life. Like, uh, I, I need to, I think reality kind of set in that I need to start. I need, I need, I need to get out of here. So I, I'm leaving, um, the trail kind of like, I can't tell you over the phone, but it kind of like snakes and it goes back down into the marsh, um, the mud and the water, whatever. And then, and and it all opens up. So I was in thick stuff and then it all kind of like opens up. And when you're out there, you know, there's these things that I don't know what they are, but they grow on trees all throughout the swamp. 
And so you can think you see something and you're not really seeing what you think you see. So I think I see this, another thing that, you know, same shape standing there, um, in, in front of me, you know, a uh, hundred yards away, what have you. And, and then I'm thinking, okay, no, it's just, my eyes are playing tricks on me. And then I see this shape squat straight down and it's jet black. And then I'm thinking, oh crap, like this is, this is not good. This is bad. And it's right on the trail. And so there, are, you know, you're hiking by yourself. There are a couple of things you don't want to do. You know, you don't want to get snake bit and there's no cell service out there. So like you break an ankle, you get snake bit, you lose the trail. You're having a bad day if one of those things happen. So I definitely, I know, okay, I can't lose the trail. I'm not turning around and going back. You know, I'm probably at this point, 20 miles into a 30 mile hike. Um, I'm not going back. And those things, <laughs> those things were, that were, came around me in the night are behind me. Um, I'm, I have to go forward. And, and I just passed one of these things. Okay. That was basically right on the trail. So I'm like, okay, what do I do? And I think, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do like a big walk in a big C, um, and just walk around this thing and then get right back on the trail and keep going. So that's what I, that's what I do. And as I'm walking around this thing, you know, this thing is squatting and it, and it's about the size of a door and it's standing behind like a three inch little tree. And it, 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 it like pivot. So if I squat or you squat, anyone squats and then you say, okay, like pivot, do a 180. you know, you, 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 you it's kind of awkward to, to have to do that. This thing was not awkward at all. It was, it, 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 it's as if it floated around this tree, which I, I just found very peculiar. Um, so it's jet black. It's got hair all over. I don't see its face. It's the face is behind the tree. And I don't, I don't look at the face. I think, okay, I know some animals at the time, this is what I'm thinking. I know some animals will be provoked if you look at them in the eyes. Well, I don't even know if that's true. That's what I've been told or I was told at the time. I don't know. So I think, okay, I'm not going to look at it in the face. So I'm kind of like watching it from my, from, from my side, you know, I'm not like staring at it or anything, but I'm definitely watching it. I've got my 38 in my hand. I go around, get back on the trail and keep going. And then this thing starts following me. And that's when I start to really lose my composure. Um, I, it, it's, it's hard to put it into words. It's, it's just hard to put it into words, that experience of having this thing follow me. And every time I would turn around, it would just be closer and just standing there. You know, and, um, and, and that's when I, I, I genuinely thought that I was going to die. I, I genuinely believed that I, this thing was going to kill me. Um, it's, it's not like a bear was, you know, if someone's had a bear follow them or a cougar, it, this is seeing this thing and experiencing it. It's, it strikes in you a fear that, that I've never experienced before. Um, just, uh, I don't know. Anyway, feeling kind of helpless. I would imagine at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I'm, I'm six two. I'm an athlete. I mean, if I don't want, I mean, I even still, if, if there, there look people, if I don't want people to, I'm a runner. Okay. I'm a runner. I'm an athlete and I'm moving. My adrenaline's pumping. I'm moving. And this thing, it just, Every time I would look back, it would just be closer and just standing there like it wasn't even trying. And I'm <laughs> I'm not like a, a I, I'm a, yeah, I, I, I said what I needed to say on that. I, anyway, I thought this thing's going to kill me. And then I thought I thought, OK, I, this is like I'm going to kill myself. And I know it's kind of like a dark part of the story, what have you. But I thought I'm, I'm going to kill myself. and so. Like I had to come to this, this decision in my mind where I, I said, you know, I went back and forth on, on making that decision because I, you have to understand that I, you know, I genuinely thought that I was going to die. And so I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fight. If I have to, I'm going to fight. I'm going to, you know, and, and this thing is what seven, eight, 
900, I don't know, 900 pounds. This thing is huge. You know, some nose 38 revolver ain't going to cut it. So, uh, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to wait. And if this thing attacks me, I'm just going to fight, do the best I can, you know, aim for the head, whatever. Wait for last moment. And so that was the plan. And so I keep, I keep going. And I, as I'm looking back, I, I no longer see this thing, but I end up passing this um, sh- very shortly after that. I, I guesstimated, sorry, it's kind of scattered my, my thoughts, but it was maybe a, a quarter mile that this, I, I estimated this thing followed me for. And, and shortly after it stopped, I passed a tree and I, I'm looking back and I see a, another one sitting in the tree. And it, I didn't understand. It didn't make sense to me because I just passed that tree and I didn't see anything. And now I'm looking back and I see something that's obviously smaller and how tall it was. I, I don't know. It was sitting in a tree, like, like as if it was sitting, in, uh, so a kid would be sitting in a, in a swing, maybe five, six foot. I, I don't know, but it was just sitting there. And I, I remember like stopping and like looking, just be, trying to like understand, like, are my eyes playing tricks on me? What am I seeing? And I thought uh, the, the conclusion is this is just a smaller one that I, I guess I missed, um, sitting there and just looking at me. Um, and, and that's maybe, maybe a hundred, you know, a hundred yards away. And the one that I passed, the second one that I saw that I passed, I I maybe was ended up being 25 yards away, 25 yards away from it, 20 yards. It's hard, hard to say. So anyway, I keep going. And at this point, I, I just kind of like lost my, my head. I lost my composure. Um, and just started basically like freak. I, I just freaked out. Um, almost like I, I would say I would, you could almost, I, I would say I was in a panic. Okay. Um, and, and I don't just so, just so people understand, I'm not one that, you know, freaks out very easily. I'm pretty level headed. Um, um, I don't scare easy. I mean, I'm 19 years old. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go hike 30 miles to the Everly's by myself. I mean, who, you know, most 19 year olds won't do that. Most people won't do that. But so that's just to give you some context. Um, yeah. I lost it. I lost my composure and I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot around in the air. And maybe after, after I pass this stuff, this thing, and I thought maybe there's a, it's hunting season or not hunting season. And if I fire shots up FWC, the wildlife guys, they'll think maybe they're out here and they'll hear it and think someone's poaching and they'll come. So I fired around off in the air and then I thought I'm going to grab my VHF radio, which at the time I was doing a lot of diving and I, I, I had my Marine radio. I knew there wasn't cell phone reception out there. And I thought, well, maybe if I get into trouble, I can, you know, reach someone on my radio. So I go into my, I go to my pack and the battery is gone on my radio. And that's one thing that I, I made sure, I made sure that it was charged and I knew where it was and it was there. It was ready to go. And I go for it and the battery is gone and I can't, that's something that's like a big question mark. I I don't even know. So I rip my pack apart looking for the battery. I think, you know, it's gotta be here. It's not there. So then I think, okay, I got to move fast and, um, you know, basically running for my life. So I, I put every, I put my water canister on my belt, my water purification tablets, everything that I, my GPS, everything that I thought that I, you know, was really important, put it on my belt and I, and I decided to ditch my pack. So I ditched my pack. I figure I need to move light move fast. And, um, you know, I, I, I ended up, you know, you can only move so fast in the heat for so long before you have to stop. So I ended up just shedding clothes. I ended up, you know, I had long pants at the time and I, for some reason I thought I could move faster if I had shorts. So I ended up cutting my long pants. I had like, like army type BDU pants. I, I cut them down, um, which didn't help, I guess, whatever. Anyway. Um, so, and as I'm running out, I, dive into the water when I start to get hot and I start taking mud and I just start kicking myself in mud to, to keep me cool. 
you know, so I could just keep moving and stay cool. So anyway, when I, when I got out, the trail empties out on I-75, uh, Alligator Alley, and it comes out to like a rest stop. You got to walk west a little bit to a rest stop. But anyway, I, I walk over to this rest stop. There's these guys sitting behind the, their truck. And I, I just walked up to him and I just fell on the floor. And I just started crying, like bawling my eyes out. And I, I just was like overwhelmed because I knew it was over. And they looked at me, they called the, you know, whoever they called ambulance, you know, F, um, FHP, Florida Highway Patrol and ambulance shows up. And I'm telling everyone, this, these monsters are following me, chasing me, whatever. And I'm like hysterical, um, pretty hysterical. Oh, and by the way, as I'm, as I'm running, I'm not stopping to pee. So when I had to pee, I just, I just pissed myself. So I'm covered. I smell like piss. I've, I've pissed myself several times. I've got long pants that are turned into shorts, no shirt on at this point, no shirt on. I'm caked my, I'm caked in mud from head to toe and I'm crying. I'm, I'm like hysterical. I'm sure it was a sight. So anyway, I'm overcome. I'm just like sobbing because I knew that it was over and that I was, it was done. And they take Naples hospital and they call my parents. Um, I live on the East coast. My parents drive over <clears throat> and I'm telling everyone, you know, these, this monster is chasing me. These things are cha- following me, whatever. And, and everyone's telling me, no, that didn't happen. No, you're wrong. You're, you're just making things up, you know? Um, and, and the doctor says, you know, Hey, you hit your head. That's what happened. And I'm like, screw me. no, I didn't hit my head. So he tells my parents that and, and he's like, listen, we want to give him a CAT scan because we think that, you know, he's, he's got a head injury or something. So they give me a CAT scan. It all comes out clear. And, you know, fun, fun fact, both, both my toenails, my big toenails, uh, fell off. If you walk through water for two days, that's, I guess what happens. Um, so anyway, I, afterwards, uh, you know, I would tell people and they would just say, oh, you're eating mushrooms or you're dehydrated, you're hallucinating or. You know, I, I've heard it. I've heard it all. You know, it's kind of like sad and frustrating because it's like, well, don't you know me? You know, like, don't you know my character? To a lot of people that are 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 close to me, they they know me and they believe me. Um, and I really don't care. You know wh- what people think. You know, it's just hey, the truth is the truth. Like this is what happened. And a- after the event, man, it, I couldn't. I didn't want to sleep alone. You know, I had nightmares. I had nightmares for a long time. I still have, when I talk about it, I still have dreams, you know? I can imagine. It definitely stays with you. And you and I were talking about that the other day, you know, after an encounter, most people have nightmares for months afterwards. It's such a, there is PTSD. And I don't want to take PTSD away from any, anyone who served in the military, but it is a form of PTSD that, that people go through. Was there any details from the any of the creatures that you saw that really stood out to you? I know you're in the Florida swamps and, you know, there's tree cover and there's a canopy and everything like that. But was there anything that really stood out to you when you were looking at any of these creatures? Uh, they were jet black. Like the it was it was hairy and just jet black. And I, I got the sense that these things were intelligent. They, that they were very intelligent. Um, in the in the night, I don't know how to describe it other than this. In the night, I got the feeling. Uh, I, I can just say it's a feeling, I guess, that they were curious. The second one that I saw, that was behind the little tree, that ended up following me. I got the feeling from that one that it was curious and that it did not want me there. That that it, 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 there was some aggression. I don't want to say aggression, but I got the feeling that it didn't want me there. What do you make of, um, I'll ask you about the intent as far as what you think they were doing, but you know, you describe your bag being hit and then the, the, uh, ham radio or the UHF, uh, radio that you use, you know, when you're out on, on in the sea, uh, the battery being missing. Do you think maybe you, didn't put the battery on it or do you think it was taken in the middle of the night only i mean obviously only you would know i know i know for sure that it was there and it was ready to go when i started because i knew that if something bad happened that was my lifeline and so that's something that i i took very seriously 
So I, you know, I, I know for sure that it was there when I started the only time that that radio was out of my sight was and, and when I was, when I was, when I passed out and that's, and that's the detail that I think is important because, you know, when you're past, you don't know what's going on around you when you're passed out. Yeah. There's an account. Your account reminds me of, uh, I believe it was in Washington state. This guy was in his hammock and, uh, he was middle of nowhere and he woke up. I can't remember if it was early. I want to say it was early morning. He woke up and, um, he said one creature was standing over the top of him looking at him and the other one was going through his pack and they were stealing stuff out of his pack. Um, and if you listen to his description, he's describing what sounds like a Sasquatch. Uh, but he said they were upright just like people would be. One was going through his pack. The other one was kind of giving him the stink eye looking at him and he let them obviously take whatever they wanted to take. Uh, it's terrifying, man, especially going out there, you know, Sasquatch aside, it's dangerous going out what you're doing out in the middle of those swamps, 30 miles deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, I guess when you're 19, you don't make the best, the best quality decisions, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. You're going to live forever when you're 19. We've all been there. Yeah. Um, what do you think the intent was? I mean, do you think the intent was if you hang around too long or if you stop for too long, they were going to hurt you? Or do you think that they were just trying to push you out? What's kind of your take on what was going on there? Uh, on the one that was, well, the first one, I think it was just by chance that I think that was just kind of a chance encounter um, where we just, I just, we just stumbled into each other, I guess. And then the the second one, same thing. Um, I think it started to follow me because looking back on it and I didn't form this opinion until years later when I, you know, after, um, but the second one was following me, I think because there was a smaller one that I was walking towards. And so it just wanted to, it wanted to get the point across that I I needed to just go and keep going. And that point, that point came in loud and clear. Um, so I, if it wanted if these things wanted to, it, it, I could have disappeared. Um, so if they wanted to take me, they, I think they could have. Um, you know, my my parents, my parents were praying for me a lot. You know, I just talked to my dad recently and, and brought it up, and he, you know, he he told me that, and my grandmother, my grandfather, and my aunt, my aunt calls my grandmother and she says, "Hey." Joseph's really on my heart, on my mind. Is he okay? And she goes, well, actually, no, he's, he's not, he's, he's out, you know, in the swamp or whatever. And, you know, it it, going on a two day hike is for, for a lot of people, that's just nothing. That's just common. That's a common thing. Not, not a big deal, but I think for whatever reason, you know, they were very concerned about me. And I think if it wasn't, if it wasn't for their prayers, I don't know if I, if I, if I would be here, you know, if I'd just be missing, disappear, what have you. I mean, if these things wanted me, um, they, they yeah, could have had me. They would have had you. Yeah, no doubt. When they were pacing you out, were, was there any vocalizations that you remember as far as, I know you heard the whoops, but as you were making your exit and they were following you, was there any vocalizations that you remember? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, there's footprints. Um, there's, there's, there's footprints all over the place. That was, that's what really struck out to me, struck out, um, stuck out. I'm sorry, st- stuck out to me. No, nothing as far as vocalizations or, or anything, uh, you know, yeah, well, I didn't, didn't well, see anything. It's terrifying, man. Your whole encounter is terrifying because you don't know what's going to happen next. And it doesn't feel like they want to hug at that moment. I, I'm I'm very, very curious. What was kind of your take on the whole Sasquatch subject prior to having this encounter? Yeah, so I, I had gone on um the BFRO website prior to this and just because, you know, hey, what's what's up with this Bigfoot thing? Um I wanted to just you know, you're just curious. Just so I I, I found my way onto that site and just read several of the accounts. And I came to the conclusion that they're real based on the eyewitness testimonies and reading through. And I just thought, okay, they're real. And they're out there because there's too many people saying the same things, 
too many eyewitness accounts that co-op um, corroborate with each other. And so I thought there's gotta be something to it. When I heard the, the whoop and I heard the wood knocks, I thought, you know, it, it brought me back to, you know, what I had read, but it's one thing to read about something. And it's another thing to, um, you know, uh, I mean, really experience it. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I, I had in theory thought that there was something to it prior to this. Have you ever gone back to that area? <laughs> Uh, so that is a, to get there, to get where I, I was, that's a, you know, you, you kind of have to commit to a, at least an overnight trip. And that's not something I'm willing to commit to. I have gone, um, back on the South side and the North side of I-75 on the Florida trail. Um, and I just do day hikes. I don't go alone. I bring people I'm armed um, and we've gone in, we've seen footprints, we have, you know, pictures and all sorts of stuff. And it, we, I didn't go back until this last year, 10, 10 years later. And I brought my brother with me and, you know, he saw, you know, it's like you're walking and you don't see any footprints. And then all of a sudden you see giant footprints out, you know, I'm talking like miles and miles in, you start seeing giant footprints. It, you know, it's the, what, what can you say? What, what, what is there to think, you, you know? So that, that was kind of nice to, to be, cause for so long people think that, you know, you're just a whack job or you're, you're nuts or maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe he's not. But when you have someone in your family, that's like, well, I, I don't know how to explain these, these footprints, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it's been, it's been very nice to have that. Um, it's been nice to have that. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. You know, and you and I were talking about this the other day. You come across a, a mother bear and her cub, and you're dead. Uh, you're not going to outrun it. You're not going to outswim it, and you're not going to outclimb it. You're a dead man. Uh, bear's going to kill it. Any real um, wildlife, if it has its young nearby, you're in big trouble. What's weird about Sasquatch is they don't really seem to react like you would think uh, most wild animals would react. You know, if you're heading towards its young, it's just going to kill you. But it's weird that Sasquatch would follow you out, but you hear it time and time again where people have run into younger ones, you know, and it, the Sasquatch don't seem to react. As long as you don't do anything, they don't seem to really react uh, like you would think an animal or, you know, it, it, the, the, an animal would react. Why do you think they didn't hurt you? I... <sighs> I, I genuinely, I mean, we're talking about just my personal belief. I, I personally believe that they would have if, if it wasn't for my family praying for me. Um, I, I firmly believe, I firmly believe I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for their prayers. I, you know, I think that God was protecting me. Maybe had angels around me. I don't know. Um, but I think, I, I don't think I, I don't think I would be here. I think they would have, I think honestly, they, they would have, I, I just, that's just what I believe. I, I don't know if that's, that's right answer. or not, but yeah, it's a fair you know. answer. You know, it is, it is odd in a lot of situations to where they come just on the edge of killing you and then they don't, which is weird to me, but they'll definitely intimidate you and they'll make you afraid and they'll make you want to leave. You know, you're already leaving at that point. It's weird that the Sasquatch would follow you and make sure you make your way out. But you hear that all the time, too. You hear people who are being followed out of the woods, and it isn't until they get to the edge of the tree line these creatures stop. Over the last 10 years, how has it affected you, this experience? Um, it, when I... That's a great question. When I came out, I had a complete, I know this kind of sounds silly, but I had a complete different kind of almost an outlook on life. So when I went in, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't living probably the way that I, I, I should be. And I came out really valuing life. I even looked at water differently. You know, I just saw everything is more beautiful and something to be va like life as to be valued and cherished. And so it, it really, that's what really spurred, um, 
so I'm, I'm a Christian and that's what really spurred me. That was kind of like the catalyst in my life. Um, in, in my personal spiritual journey that, that, that's what really made me take, start taking my faith seriously. I, I came out of there like, okay, you know, with, with a purpose and a drive in life that I, I didn't have before. Um, so really like a beautiful, um, and people who, people who know me can attest to that. I mean, they can just in my family and everyone, they, they just can t- attest to that. So it, it's like, I had to fight to live. Like I had to fight to live. I know that sounds silly. And no, it doesn't but sound silly it's like, at all. I, I had to want it, you know? And I was in a, I, I felt like I was in a situation where, um, and on my way out too, I almost stepped on, you know, the whole time I didn't step on any snakes on my way out. I almost stepped on, and maybe it's cause I was hysterical and moving fast and, not paying attention, but I almost stepped on a few water moccasins. And then, you know, when you get close, they kind of, they'll curl up and then they'll, they'll, their head will come back and they'll, you can, they'll open up their mouths and you see like their white mouths. And I, I, I came real close to stepping on a few of them and I, I didn't. So, um, I, I don't know. I, um, I forget the question, but <laughs> no, that's all right, man. I yeah. think you're lucky to be here. Uh, cause you were an easy target. It is a terrifying account. I know 10 years is a lot of time to heal. And um, I want to ask you, do you, would you ever want to see one again? Yeah. Yes and no. Yes and no. So I, I think I would. And at this, at, let me see one. Let me see one. And then I'll let you know. Let me see one again. And I'll tell you, yeah. you know, I'll answer that question. I, it's, I, I don't, I, I, I kind of have mixed feelings, to be honest. Yeah, and that's understandable. I think a lot of times people who even have uh, terrifying encounters, after some time passes, they go, you know what, I, I would like to see one again, maybe from a distance and maybe it not chasing yeah. me. Um, yes. But yes. there's this moment, I think, after you've had an encounter to where you know what you saw and you know what you experienced. But having said that, it's this weird human psychology to where we think, I didn't really see that. Did I dream that up? Did that really happen? Like, it feels like a bad dream. And it's so hard to come to uh, the reality of, yeah, that's actually what I saw. You know, but there's that you fight with your own inner self being like, there's no way I, that actually happened. Maybe I didn't see that. Maybe, it, but at the end of the day, you can't lie to yourself. You know what you saw. So I think a lot of people, even if they have terrifying encounters, they go, yeah, I would like to see one again, maybe from about mm-hmm. 300 yards away and I'm on top of a mountain and there's no way for it to get to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to kind of prove to yourself, like, I, if I could go back, I wish I could see it longer or maybe film it. Or um, I think that's what drives a lot of people after they've they've had an encounter, especially a terrifying encounter. Yeah, for for me, there's no question. There's no question about you know, did I really see that? You know, there it's like there's no doubt in my mind. And if 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 I saw one again, I hope it wouldn't be a terrifying experience. But I'm I'm more I'm mentally prepared now. I, I go out with you know I go out armed. I got more. I have more than a 38 snub nose revolver when I go out and I don't go out alone. So I, I feel, I feel comfort when I do. And when I go out, you know, I went out once to set up a trail cam, um, in a wildlife management area. And I just felt so uneasy, just, just being there by myself, just everything, just, I, I'm, I'm watching my back every time I'm, I'm jumpy. I'm anxious. It's just not, it's not, it's not fun. I just can't do it. I just don't want to do it. So just being with a, you know, a small group of people, that I trust, um, you know, and if we saw one again under, under those circumstances, I, you know, um, yeah, I, I think that would be, that would be cool. Under different circumstances, no doubt. I'm always jealous of the people that are like, yeah, I was driving my car and it was on the side of the road, you know, and they're passing it. And <laughs> you know, th- that's the encounter I'd want, you know, when you're in your car, right. you're heading, you're doing 50 miles an hour and, um, uh, you know, you're relatively safe. What do you think that they are, Joe? What's kind of your personal opinion? Well, like you say all the time, I you know I don't have one in my garage that I'm studying, um, and I and I, I I like that because 
look, you, nobody really knows. We, we can speculate. So my best guess, my speculation from my point of view and, and from my worldview, I kind of think that they're in line with what the Bible talks about with uh, the Nephilim in Genesis chapter six, where these fallen angels came and had sex with women or whatever. And then the offspring was Nephilim. So I think that they're human hybrids. I think they're my personal opinion. Okay. Um, I think that they're half angel, evil fallen angel and half human. Um, and that's just my me guessing. I don't know, but based on, you know, some of the things that I've heard other people on your podcast and whatnot with mind speak and cloaking and, and even when I saw them, like, you know, there's, there's, I came out with an impression that they're extremely intelligent. When I say intelligent, not like an animal intelligent, I'm talking like a person or smarter type of intelligence. So, you know, that's just what I think. I think that they're, they're evil human hybrids is what I personally think that they are. Yeah, and that's a fair answer. It's like I said, no one really knows. You know, I'm just kind of right. curious on your opinion. And you're right. I mean, you could be right. There's a lot of weird accounts of them doing bizarre things. I just talked to a cop who he's sitting in his patrol car and this he sees what appears to be like you remember the movie Predator? Yes. And he sees that and it's walking. And he's looking at it, and he's in shock. What's fascinating about his account, so he's watching this thing, and it's not far from his patrol car, and he's terrified at this point, and it stops and kind of looks back in his direction, or he felt like it was looking at him, and then it takes off, and it runs behind a pillar next to this church. It's a kind of a long story, but it's next to a wood line, and he can still see it behind the pillar. He can see the shoulder sticking out. But he said, Wes, it, it reminded me of a distortion in the air. It did not appear to be, you know, physical, uh, but it was there. And then it took off running. Mm. And the moment it took off running, he said it looked like uh, what people describe as Sasquatch. He said all of a sudden it became very physical. And, you know, not that a cop is more uh, credible than anyone else, but a cop has more to lose by coming forward and talking about this. But that sort of experience you hear time and time again from people who specifically have these things on their property. A lot of people who have uh, encounters, your encounter lasted a lot longer than, than most people. Most people, it's a quick glimpse and it's gone. Uh, but people have been around him for a while. They'll describe bizarre things like that or their eyes glowing. I've talked mm. to many hunters who, you know, they know when there's eye shine and when there's eye glow. They seem to do bizarre things that defy a normal animal. And in my opinion, I think there's more to this story. There's more going on here than you'll hear from, quote unquote, Bigfoot research experts uh, who got an answer for everything. You know, when someone has an answer for everything, don't ask any follow-up questions because their theories start to fall apart the moment you do that. But it's hard to pass off some of this weird stuff that goes on. I don't think that they're the Nephilim, but I can see why you would think that. You know, and, and again, I could be wrong. You know what I mean? I don't I don't know at all. I could be 100% wrong. They could be the Nephilim. But they seem to do weird things that defy a normal animal. And you're right. Until you experience them coming around you, it's not like a normal animal. It, it's very, it's almost like a human intelligence, but smarter. Right. Yes. hundred percent. You, you, you say that and it's, it's hard to understand until you've ex experienced it to really know, you know, the level of fear and to, to experience the, the sense of intelligence. It's, it's, it's hard to put it into words. Yeah, and your encounter, man, is terrifying, especially when you're by yourself. For me, you know, I think it'd be terrifying, Sasquatch aside, terrifying just to go hang out in the swamps of Florida 30 miles deep. Because <laughs> you know everything wants to kill you. I mean, you got water moccasins, you got gators, you got, you name it, everything wants to kill you. And then on top of that, you throw these creatures in. You wouldn't catch me out there, so I got to give it to you for uh, for going out there on a 30-mile hike, man. Well, anytime you want to come and go for a little walk in the woods out there, um, you know, we've started to go back, you know, I've started to go back out just on day hikes and we have a good time. So if you ever want to, you know, you're ever in South Florida and 
want to challenge and come on let's 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 go <laughs> how about we hang out at the beach and drinks are on me <laughs> <laughs> all right you got it you got a deal yeah we'll go diving yeah there you go um yeah i appreciate you sharing it man because it is a terrifying encounter i mean to be run out of there and you're talking about a long period of time to where uh, you're not really sure if you're going to make it out or not you know i know you were nervous about telling the part about you know killing yourself but and if you're in that moment, you know, I used to joke on the show, if you shoot one, save one bullet for yourself because you might need it. And it was a half joke because there was some truth behind that. And I think the way you you were just trying to exit, you didn't. I think if you would have started pointing your gun towards them and maybe fired off, I think you would have been I wouldn't be talking to you. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. I know when I when I was walking past it, I had the hammer cocked back and um I wasn't, I was trying to do anything but provoke for sure. Uh, and if, if I, if I had, and some people, some, I've told the story before and some people say, why didn't you shoot it? And they, you know, those people that say that they just don't understand, you know, they're, they're definitely not hunters and they just don't understand, you know, you know, try shooting a 200 pound bear with a 38. It, it just, it just doesn't, it's not going to go good for you, much less a 700 pound or however much this thing weighed, you know, giant thing, monster you know yeah, you're just it, gonna it's piss it off is what you're, you're gonna just do. gonna make it mad exactly yeah yeah it really is a good thing that you didn't shoot i think in that situation you would have been um and then you know i mean you saw three of them but the night before when you were sitting in your hammock you had the impression there was more than three didn't you yeah i so i distinctly heard four um around me and they were you know one to the north one to the south one to the east one to the west Um, and so they were around me and they were, I could hear them very close. I knew that they were very, very close. And I distinctly heard the footsteps, the bipedal walking and you know, they're in thick brush, you know, they're, I mean, it's loud. I'm hearing them walk through the brush. It's loud. You know, you can hear each one of them. Um, so there was definitely four of them. Um, and like I said, I didn't see them that night, but I definitely heard them. Definitely, um, heard them walk. Yeah, last question I want to ask you. How many knocks did you hear when you were in your hammock? How many wood knocks uh, did you hear? Do you remember? You know, Wes, I, I don't remember. I wish I would have paid attention, but I, I, I just honestly don't don't remember. Yeah, and that's okay. That's okay. Don't know. Um, it's terrifying, man, especially to have them around you, and, and you really are at their mercy at that moment. And you hear it from the cop I was telling you about earlier. You know, cops are armed to the teeth. And he had the impression that it was a paperweight, you know, it was pointless. It was useless uh, compared Mm -hmm. to what he was seeing. It's a scary account, man. I really appreciate you coming forward because, you know, you're not the only guy this this has actually happened to. And I think um, a lot of people, after they have an encounter like this, they think, I'm the only one that's seen this. And people are going to think I'm crazy if I talk about it. And it couldn't be farther from the truth. Well, I, I agree, Wes. Uh, and I, let me just thank you, man, for having me on, for talking with me. You know, most people don't know I, how much work that I'm sure goes into this. You told me you, you skipped dinner, lunch. You've been at it all day. You're at it every day. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. So, man, th- uh, you know, thanks for the work that you do, the time that you put in. I, I, you know, I think it's important and you do a, a fantastic job. The platform that you have, you have a, you have quite a, a large platform and it's for good reason. You know, you put in the work. So, man, thanks for having me, Wes, and thanks for everything you do. Thanks so much, Joseph. You know, it's uh, it is a lot of work and uh, but it does help people. You know, it helped me to listen to people's encounters after I had my own and I hope it helps someone else. But uh, thank you for coming on. All right. Thanks, Wes. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance to check out sasquatchchronicles.com, you can become a member and get additional shows. Until next time, everyone.